I'm Taryn, and you're watching Favorites on Live in Limbo. Oh, wow. My favorite fan interaction at a show. Actually, it was recently in San Francisco. Um, there were two people there that uh, we started playing an older song, and um, I could hear them singing out in the crowd, and that was super wild because that hasn't really happened to us on this tour yet. And uh, I got to talk to them after the show a lot, and it just it was a really special thing. Um, they had gotten off of a plane like right then and drove straight or took like an Uber or something straight to the show. And yeah, it was just really surreal. And, um, to be, you know, having that interaction with someone so far from home, you know, and especially with an older record, um, the visibility was a lot lower. And so I think that it just kind of surprised me and it was really, it was a really sweet moment. Yeah. It made me feel lucky. <laughs> Honestly, most of these things do. Um, I constantly uh, feel like I have to do the, pinch me I'm dreaming kind of thing with myself you know in that uh every day is different but it's it's all surreal and uh, I just feel really lucky to be getting to do it you know there's so many amazing bands or musicians that I know that aren't and so I feel really lucky to be there who is my favorite artist right now it changes so often <laughs> well it's not that it changes so often it's that um depending on uh, the mood of a certain time. But I listen to William Basinski the most consistently. I'd say it's very medicinal for me. Um, as far as, well, the, the show that I saw the other night was I saw Auto Lux for the first time, and that new record has really been blowing my mind. So getting to see that live in Chicago was really, really cool. They're an amazing band. I think Carlos, like the best drummer I've ever seen play live too, is insane. But yeah, so I've been listening to that record a lot and Dave Harrington's record just came out and uh, his release shows in New York and we'll be there. So I'm really, really excited. That record's stunning. It's really amazing. I think that what, what I find unique in them is that uh, their voice, you know, and what, what's interesting about like William Basinski and Dave Harrington is that there aren't lyrics, you know, there aren't necessarily like discernible vocals, but I can tell it's like a piece of theirs based on the, the timbre and the way it's mixed and the, just the overall texture. And I think that speaks volumes, you know, when it's, um, when the voice is an instrument and being able to pick that out amongst, you know, what you're hearing. Yeah. What's my favorite song to perform live? Um, I've been joking about it recently in that I, I like doing Desired Things live. Uh, and it's almost self-indulgent because it's not the track that you would necessarily center on. Like, you need to play this one live, like, every night. But it's the one that I insist we play every night. Um, it's very cathartic for me, and it has a lot of room to change every night. And I think that's what's exciting about it to me is that... Uh, I kind of get lost in it too. And I've had interactions with people that they've said that, that that was the moment in the set where they like sunk in. And I think that's really, really cool. And so, yeah, I like doing that one the most, I feel like. I think, I think that like there's this connection between the, the audience and I in that with that song, it, the energy is really palpable in that way. And so the more technical songs that I have to worry about, I think that translates, you know, they, like I'm focusing on that and I'm not necessarily, I haven't surrendered to it. And I think with that track, I do. I absolutely am. That's the point in the set where I like ground myself again. I think that that translates to the listener and that they can see it. You know, it, it's more raw. Favorite part of touring? Oh, I'm still trying to find it. I'm kidding. Um, just getting to play to new people, honestly, because if when you stay in a region for a long time, they've heard the songs, you know, they've seen your show and um, know what to expect to some degree, but it kind of revives and like rejuvenates, like even the old songs for me, knowing that the people that were going to play in front of haven't heard them live. And so th that's the 
that's something that, that I really center on with touring is remembering that and having to remind myself, you know, like they haven't heard this yet. So even though it might seem old to you, you know, it's not. So, and it brings me back. So I think that that, that's a really cool aspect of it. My favorite method of discovering new artists generally it comes organically in a dialogue, you know, with someone like we bounce back and forth of like, this is what I like. If you like this, you might like this kind of thing. Uh, I also do a lot of just finding a label that I really like what they release on a, you know, in an overall, you know, scheme of things. And so I will kind of dig through their discography and just see like what, what they have and listen to things. And then that's, um, it generally leads me to something else, you know, but uh, yeah, like Important Records is a really cool label that puts out like a little bit more experimental things. And um, but yeah, I mean, blogs are great. <laughs> they're really, they're they're really great for like fast paced things. You know, like if I'm on the road and I'm like streaming through something, like I I see something that I'm drawn to, and then I open it, and then it leads me to something else. You know, I think that's why it it works. You know, um, it's like a community. You know, and that's where we exist now. We exist a lot on the internet, which is why I like to have the dialogue too with with people, but it, it all works together, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I, f I feel like I might be a little too hungry. You know what I mean? Like I, I find something and even though I love it, like I need to find something else like it or something different from it, you know? So I'm always buying records or listening to them or, you know, but I don't stay on one thing for too long and maybe to my detriment. My favorite person to follow on Instagram or Twitter? Oh, this is a tough one. I'm trying to think. It's generally like my friends. Like I have a couple really, really funny friends that they, they're just, their social media presence, like I laugh every time something of theirs comes up and that's like the most important thing to me is being able to elicit laughter um, without trying too hard, you know, and they don't. But. Um, so yeah, I have a friend named Amy Trompeter that I love. Like her presence, S Sasha Geffen, um, they, their Twitter is insane. Like it's amazing. So, uh, and I think they just started writing for MTV, but they've done a lot with Consequence of Sound and Pitchfork and things like that. But they're, they're very informative, but they're also just really, really funny. So yeah, Sasha, I just stay with Sasha. More recently, the thing that I've found that kind of grounds me or gets me back in a good headspace is uh, is exercise. <laughs> Honestly, I, I spent so much time in high school being an athlete, and then once that stopped, you know, after that point in my life, it was something I was missing and didn't really realize until recently. And I've been trying to do, like, a little bit of cardio before every show and things like that to make sure that I'm... I'm keeping those adrenals open, you know, but I've noticed that like if I need to go just like take a second, like I can jump rope for 15 minutes and then come back and feel better, you know? So I, that's what I've been doing the most or just listening to like something just really drony for like <laughs> a little bit. Oh, that's really, that's really tough. I, I, I mean, recently bottom lounge was pretty crazy. Just like how large it was. We, a lot of the times, like we go into a, a venue to load in and we don't really know what the room's like. And I thought that was going to be like in a basement, small, you know, and, and it was probably like 700 cap, I think something like that. Echoplex was wild too. Like I don't, you know, I don't know what to expect. And so getting to see those spaces for the first time as you roll up is pretty cool but um i'd say uh, one of the most memorable shows had to have been babies all right in new york just because that, that was like the first tour we did on jekyll and hyde and um it was it's a really beautiful venue and it's like uh it's slowly climbing to be one of like the, the spots you know it's great the sound's great the design of it everything and um it was just a really big show for us and we actually opened up for porches and it was like two years ago so it's wild being on tour with them now but yeah so that was a really special show and i definitely remember that one the most oh that that one's actually easy now <laughs> um my most treasured uh musical instrument is a guitar that danny corwin built for me back home 
it's based on a, a and Dave Harrington inspired some of its functions, but um because we like talked about it like what what I wanted it to do and how we could arrive at that point and yeah, I get it's the thing I get most asked about too after shows. They're like, you've three inputs on your guitar, why? You know. But yeah, it's it's a really cool thing and I'm still exploring it. I it's like one of those things where y- you don't really have control. You know, it's like being a trainer of like a really big animal. You know, it's like there's this kind of I don't know, this tug of war that I don't have complete control over all of its capabilities yet, and that's exciting to me.